In this video, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the brand new Kobo Libra Color, and I could not be more excited to share this device with you. Before we get into it, I wanna say a huge thank you to Kobo for sending me this device. If you've never heard of Kobo before, they've been around since 2010, and they've been making incredible e-readers ever since. This is actually my first time reviewing slash owning a Kobo, and I could not be more grateful to Kobo. So thank you so much for sending this for review. You, it's greatly appreciated. This video is going to break down into three very simple parts. We're going to start off by talking about some specs for this device. Then we're going to give the bulk of the review, which will be made up of pros and cons for this device. And then we'll end by answering the big question, is this device for you? So let's get right into it by talking about some of the specs. This device features a seven inch e-ink color display, which uses Kaleido 3 technology. And as you can probably tell, it is absolutely gorgeous. Now for the bulk of this video, as I'm holding up the device, I'm going to have this screen brightness turned almost all the way down, just so that it doesn't overwhelm the camera lens. Otherwise, it'll just be a big glowing box and I'll be like in a shadow the whole time. The screen gets brighter than this, I promise, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. And when viewing black and white images on the screen, it features a 300 pixels per inch display that does drop to 150 pixels per inch when the display is featuring color. To be completely honest though, I never noticed any difference. I only came to learn that when researching for the video and looking up the specs, so if you're worried about that, I would not be super duper worried. The quality looks fantastic no matter what I've viewed so far on this device. It also features a dark mode, which is just where the colors invert. The blacks become whites, the whites become blacks. Obviously, colorized images are going to stay exactly the same. And this device also features the ability to adjust the warmth of the light thanks to the Comfort Light Pro feature on this device. And you can also set it to automatic so that the screen brightness will get a little warmer as the night grows on. As far as storage goes, this device comes standard with a whopping 32 gigabytes of storage. Kobo says that's enough to carry 24 ebooks or about 150 audiobooks, but obviously that's going to vary just a little depending on the books that you actually have on the device, but I think that gives us a pretty rough idea. As far as connectivity, it is not cellular enabled. You can connect via Wi-Fi. You can also connect devices via Bluetooth, and then for charging or transferring files, you'll connect via USB-C. The battery on this, Kobo says, will last you 40 days with some caveats. If your screen brightness is at 30%, if you read for about 30 minutes a day, and if you've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth disabled, your device will last, Kobo says, 40 days on a single charge. As far as the weight of this device, it is 200 grams, but if you are American like me and have no idea what that actually means, that's about seven ounces. So it's not heavy at all, and it's super duper comfortable in the hand. And then lastly, you need to know this device is waterproof. You spill something on it, drop it in the tub, you're reading at the beach and a big wave comes, you're gonna be all right. Maybe don't take it on your next diving trip, but other than that, it is waterproof. Now that we've got the specs out of the way, let's get started on the pros and the cons. Starting off with the pros, and the biggest pro of all is color. It's got color, if you didn't know that. There's color on here. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful and so fun to use. Now, I don't really consume a lot of media that necessitates color. I mostly read novels. So other than the book cover, everything's in black and white anyway, but it's so fun to see the covers in color. And it's nice to know I could read a comic book or a graphic novel and it would be in full color. It makes shopping on the device a lot more fun too as I'm looking through the books. The covers really just pop out. It's just a lot more fun when compared to the standard e-reader that I'm used to where everything is kind of depressing and black and white and just feels a little bit drab. The pop of color is really, really nice. And with that comes the ability to highlight in color on this device, which is a joy. Again, I'm not a big annotator or even highlighter as I read, but I've kind of been trying to do it more on this device just because it's so fun to do and it looks so pretty. And the device also features notebooks. And there are so many different options to choose from. There's your simple blank sheet of paper to some very complex, graphs and charts and all kinds of preset notebooks and journals that Kobo has offered. And they're just so fun to look at and to use. I mean, I have no real reason to use any of these, but it's just fun to mess around with and 
to think maybe one day I could be so cool to use journals on my Kobo. Kobo says that thanks to the Kaleido 3 technology that's baked into this device, there are 4,092 hues that you can visually see on this device. So a lot of hues. You can also listen to audiobooks on this device once you have connected an external Bluetooth speaker or headphones. Another really big pro is that I think this device is in a perfect middle ground between portability and usability. A seven inch display I think is exactly the sweet spot where you can still take it with you, you can throw it in a purse. It's probably a little too big to fit say in a pocket or something like that, but you can throw it in a bag and it will fit perfectly. But while you're using it, you're not gonna be squinting and you're not gonna be like holding it four inches from your face. It's a very usable slash portable device. Now I've already mentioned it, but the stylus I think is a really big part of what makes this device so great. Now this thing does not come with a device, you have to purchase it separately and we'll talk more about that in just a minute. But really the fun of this device, I think, is in the stylus. You have to, as far as I know, use the Kobo stylus too with it. You can't just use any old stylus. I tried to use my Scribe stylus and it did not work. I haven't tried an Apple Pencil, but I assume that's not going to work either. You have to use their stylus. But the writing capabilities on this, it's just really fun. It's fun to doodle, it's fun to underline, it's fun to make little notes on the margin. And I mean, that's really the strength of this device. In my experience, it's a very quick and snappy device. When you try to enter characters, they show up in the search bar. And when you search, the device actually begins to search. And <laughs> when you turn pages, they turn. It's all really nice. And for an e-reader, which is a pretty low-tech device, it's really responsive and just easy and fun to use. And compared to some other devices, uh, it's just much snappier and much quicker. Now, usually at the top of a pros or cons list will be the price for me. But on this list, I think the price deserves to be somewhere in the middle of the pack because brand new, this thing costs 220 US dollars, which is really not bad at all for a full color e-ink device. 220 is basically unbeatable. I'm not absolutely blown away by the value here, but it's not a bad price at all. So I'm going to give this the affordability check mark. I think it's very affordable for what it is. We'll talk more about some downsides to the cost and the way that you purchase the device and so forth in just a minute. But for the device itself, I think it is very affordable. Now, I don't know that this necessarily deserves to be called a pro or a con in and of itself. It's kind of just a minor thing, but it's a minor thing I think you should know. The stylus does connect magnetically to the device. It's not part of the case that I have on it, but to the device itself, the stylus will magnify, mag magnetify, it will click on and it will stay there pretty good. Another thing you need to know if you are a big note taker or if you're journaling on here pretty heavy and you wanna get your notes slash journals onto another device, Google Drive and Dropbox are both built in directly to this device so that you can export very easily and access your documents on other devices. Another thing I really grew to appreciate about this device is the interface. So coming directly from being exclusive to Kindle, more or less, I kind of found it to be a little bit weird at first, like anyone would going from one thing to another. But after a very short amount of time, the interface really grew on me and navigating the main menus became kind of fun and it made a lot of sense to me. The way everything is laid out is just really nice and neat and easy to find and easy to navigate. And then even beyond that, in the book, I think there's a lot of really cool features that I've not seen before on an e-reader. And the biggest one that I really appreciated is that at the top of this screen, as you read, it will tell you the name of the book, it'll tell you the chapter that you're on in the book, and then it'll even tell you the page that you're on within that chapter. And the coolest thing is that it will modify that number if you make the font larger, which would increase the number of pages, or if you make the font smaller, which would decrease the number of pages. But I just think it's really cool that it tells you not only your progress through the whole book, but your progress through a specific chapter. If you're like me and you need that little bit of motivation as you read, I think it's really, really neat. This device will also auto rotate as you read, or if you don't like auto rotate, you can toggle that on or off so that your screen stays the same no matter how you're reading it. This device also features handwriting recognition, so if you would like to write out longhand your notes, but have those notes convert into text in real time, it will do that, and I think that's really, really cool. 
even for someone who has the world's worst handwriting, it works. So I really appreciate that. And then also as I use this device, I've noticed very little bleed through. Now there is some, but for the most part, the images or colors from a previous screen do not really linger. And then the last very general pro that I have to mention is just overall simplicity and ease of use. Having never used a Kobo before in my life, I feel like I'd figured out about 95% of it within like 10 minutes. It just made sense. It was very intuitive and just super easy to read and get started on. Now that said, there are some cons that I have to tell you about with this device. The first being the battery. So Kobo claims that you can get 40 days on a single charge on this device with some caveats that we talked about. And I recognize those are pretty specific. Most people are not going to meet the qualifications there to get 40 days worth of battery out of it. But I've had this device for about a week and I have had to charge it like once. Now, when I received it, it was about halfway charged and it never got all the way dead. In fact, it barely ever f fell between probably like 25% of the way through. So I probably wouldn't have had to charge it necessarily, but the battery got low enough where I felt like, okay, I should probably throw this thing on the charger. I realized I haven't had it long enough. I haven't had it 40 days to see if it will last that long, but it did dwindle just a little faster than I expected. Still absolutely incredible but 40 days is probably not what you're going to get out of the battery on this thing. Another really big con is the overall brightness of the display. So the display looks absolutely beautiful. I love the vivid colors, but even with the brightness turned all the way up, I still feel like it was just a little bit dim and just never really got to the brightness that I would have liked it to and maybe even sometimes felt like I needed it to get to. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was never hard to read or never hard to, you know, do what I needed to do on the device. But I just wish it got a little bit brighter. Now, I mentioned the stylus a moment ago and it's really fun to use and it feels really good in the hand. But I do have a couple of cons with the stylus. First and foremost, the price. So this is $70 for the stylus. It is not included with the device. So that brings your grand total if you buy the device and the stylus to about 300 bucks, 290 before taxes, which is not super bad, but I feel like the stylus costs like more than a third of the device cost. And to me, that ratio just feels kind of weird. Um, that's just me. I don't know. Maybe you feel differently, but $70 feels a little steep for this device. And then speaking also of the stylus, it charges independently from the Kobo. So if you're familiar, say with the Apple pencil, you know, it just magnetizes onto the top of the iPad and charges that way. This one charges separately via USB-C that you've got to plug in to a charger and it's not a huge deal, but I wish I didn't have to worry about that. I wish I didn't have to charge two things for the same device. And then the last thing that I'll mention with the stylus is that as I write on the Libra, it doesn't really have that pen and paper or pencil and paper feel. And that has more to do with the screen than the stylus, I assume. But it just kind of feels like plastic on plastic as I write. And that's not a huge deal. It's mostly just aesthetic. But compared to like the Scribe, for example, where you use a stylus and it's kind of got the sound of pen on paper and it's got kind of the feel of pen on paper. If you have never used a Scribe or any other like digital notebook, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. And I probably sound like a weirdo. But if you have, I think you know what I'm talking about. And it's just not quite as satisfying drawing on the Libra compared to some other devices that I've used. I should also mention, though, in defense of the stylus, it does have an eraser on the back or on the end. And then it's also got this little button on the side that you use to easily highlight text. So it's a fun little stylus. $70 does feel a little steep though. Another thing that you should know that I've categorized as a con, it's really just information, is that cases for the Kobo Libra 2 will not fit the Kobo Libra color. So you'll need to purchase a whole new case for this device, which is also not super duper cheap on Kobo's website. The cases for this device are, I believe, $40. So not awful, but between the stylus and the case, you are paying more than half of the device cost itself. So 
it adds up a little bit quickly. And then the last con here is unfortunately going to be build quality. So this device is made out of recycled plastic, which I think is really, really awesome. But if you're familiar, say, with the Kindle Basic, you know, the kind of plastic that the Kindle Basic is made out of, it's just kind of a cheaper feeling plastic, uh, whereas the Kindle Paperwhite is also made out of plastic, but it kind of just feels a little more solid, a little more premium. The Kobo Libra color is also made out of that cheaper feeling plastic. And I understand, I mean, this device is very affordable for what it is, $220. You can't even get a Kindle Oasis with a black and white screen for less than, I think, $250. So cheaper than the Oasis with color. It's a trade-off that I think I'm willing to make, but I do wish that it felt just a little more premium. With the case on, that does sort of solve the problem. The case makes it feel a lot more sturdy and just... A little more premium, especially because this is like a, a faux leather type feel. So it just feels nice. But by itself, the device does feel just a little bit kind of cheaply made. It's really light and kind of just feels plasticky. But all in all, the final verdict, I absolutely love this device. And I can say confidently that as of right now, this is my favorite e-reader that I own. Yes, it does feel a little bit cheap, but that's because... It is very affordable. 220 bucks is not a bad price at all for this. Now, if you start adding the stylus in the case, it adds up pretty quickly. But for the device itself, I think it's a really good value. And it's so fun to use. Even as someone who doesn't consume media that necessitates color, it's nice to just see book covers in color, to shop the store and see everything in color, to know that I could read comic books one day or graphic novels in color. It's just a really nice new thing that, I really, really have grown to appreciate. And now the idea of going back to my old Kindles that don't have color feels a little depressing. I got to be honest. So is this device for you? Well, obviously only you know that. I can't tell you for sure, but a couple questions that might help you make your decision just a little bit easier. First and foremost, most obviously, do you consume media in color? Do you read a lot of graphic novels? Do you read a lot of comic books? Do you read manga, even though manga is mostly black and white? Do you read manga and really want those first few pages to be in color? Uh, if so, I think it's a no-brainer. Do you not have an e-reader already? Obviously, this is the one I would choose if I was fresh into the e-reader space. I think this is the, the best thing out right now for the money. So I would 100% go for the Kobo Libra color. But a couple other questions. Are you like me and mostly just read novels? Do you already have an e-reader or two? If that was the case and I was you, I don't think that I would necessarily feel compelled to pick this device up, but I would still be pretty interested. So I don't know. You decide for yourself. That's the information. That's the review. If you want more information about these devices, please check out the links in the description below where I've got more information about the Kobo Libra color, the Kobo Clara color, and then more information just on Kobo generally. But that's the video. Thank you so very much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you're interested in this device or not. I always appreciate hearing from you guys, but until next time, I'll see you in the next video.